Today we're going to talk about the general stormwater training that is mandated by the US EPA and the different state environmental agencies that you may have to deal with. Hi, my name is Mike James with James Environmental Management. I welcome you to another in a series of training videos and training programs prepared for the auto recycling and the scrap metal industries on complying with your stormwater regulations of your individual area. In the United States, in 1992, some environmental regulations affecting the Clean Water Act were passed that required certain industries to comply with stormwater discharge regulations. If you're in the auto recycling or in the scrap metal industries or in a host of other industry sectors, then these regulations apply to you. In some cases, it's the US EPA that mandates what regulations apply and in other cases it's your individual state and in some cases your individual local government whether it's city or county. The purpose of the stormwater regulations and the entire stormwater program was to prevent releases of certain pollution from facilities into the waterways of the United States and into the waterways of individual states or localities. Some things that will not necessarily affect you directly but still have to be done are things like management certifications that, they, that these things have been paid attention to. We also have to do certain inspections. Some of you may be involved in those inspections. We have to spell out in the stormwater pollution prevention plan things like pollution sources, what pollutions do we have and where are they located in the facility. We have to have a site map that shows where each of these pollution sources are and where does, where does the rainwater that impacts that area of the facility drain to. We have to have, and this will likely end up on the test that you might see at the end of this, we have to have something called management measures and controls. Now I'm going to use the phrase best management practices for these. BMPs, and you should remember that phrase, the BMPs are very basically the physical things that we do to keep oil from getting in the river. Well there really are two kinds of BMPs that we all have to deal with in every facility. There's structural BMPs and there's non-structural BMPs. So we've got structural and we've got non-structural BMPs. Let's talk about the structural BMPs for a moment. Structural BMPs are physical things that we do to help get, prevent pollution from getting into the stormwater runoff. A building can be a BMP. Let's use as an example a dismantling shop. In most cases, the regulations do not require that we do dismantling inside a building but our, our business owners tend to provide a, a dismantling bay for you to do your work. That building is a best management practice. If we dismantle a car on a concrete pad and we make sure that the oil doesn't leave the car or leave the pad and end up in the river, that is a best management practice as well. Some other structural BMPs include secondary containment for a tank or a drum. They include the fact that we, we channel the stormwater to a place where sediments can fall out of the stormwater. We make sure that stormwater flows where we want it to flow, not just where it wants to flow. All of those kinds of things are structural best management practices. Now we've got to talk about non-structural BMPs. Non-structural BMPs include things like the training that we're doing right now. 
it's important that you understand the impact that your job has on pollution that may run off of the property. Training is a, is a non-structural BMP. Probably the single most non-structural BMP that we deal with and maybe the single most important BMP that we deal with at any facility is housekeeping. If you keep a good clean house at your auto recycling facility then all of these other environmental issues will end up being minor because we keep things picked up, we keep things where they're supposed to be. That means that we drain oil and gasoline from a car in the place where we're supposed to drain it. That means that we keep all of those kinds of things from touching the ground and subsequently running off the property. So housekeeping is, I, I can't name anything that is more important to implementing your stormwater plan than implementing good housekeeping practices. Some other BMPs that are important, remember I said something about housekeeping? Well, there is a requirement that you go look at your yard once in a while. When you're walking around the yard, one of the places that you need to go is towards the area where the rainwater runs off. This is commonly called an outfall. You need to look at every outfall for your facility probably at least once a month and, and, and no longer than once a quarter. And you need to take a look that there's nothing like it's common that a piece of scrap or a motor or a tranny core falls out or ends up near that area. It's, it, this is the time when you need to identify it and pick it up. Because we don't want the water that runs off of our property to run across stuff that's going to end up contaminating the outfall. Alright, let's talk about rain sampling and stormwater sampling. Do you have a rain gauge up? If you don't have a rain gauge, you need to go put one up. Put it in a place where it, it has uninterrupted access to collect the rainfall. Um, many of you already have your rain gauges up, but you need one. Put the rain gauge where you can get to it so you can collect the sample and know how much rainfall you got. Now if you live in places like Missouri or Maryland or maybe two or three other states around the country, you're lucky that you don't have to do any rainwater sampling. That's a good thing. In the states where you do need to sample rainwater, or do need to sample your stormwater or your precipitation, in the back of your stormwater pollution prevention plan is a section called monitoring. And it tells you exactly what you need to do, it tells you how often you need to sample and where your sample kits need to go and all of those kinds of things. This is all part of the training. Now somebody in your stormwater pollution prevention team is designated as the person that collects stormwater samples. A couple of things on stormwater sampling and they've been covered in other training videos. Just make sure you don't let those things sit around over a weekend and get them into the laboratory in time when they're still cool and not let them get hot because it just makes the sample be bad. If you, uh, if you let it get hot. Okay, we've talked about the heart of your stormwater plan, the best management practices, but let's talk about two or, other, two or three other things that you need to recognize and understand if some regulator were to ask you if you'd had training. There's some other things that you need to recognize, and, and then we'll have this uh, training for your stormwater pollution prevention program under control. Every year, we're supposed to take a look at, now this varies from state to state exactly whether or not it's yearly or uh, once a quarter or once ever or twice a year, but every year you're supposed to do what's called a comprehensive annual review of your stormwater control programs. Now all this is is very simply we're taking a look at our best management practices and we're making a decision are they working or not. If they're not working, then we're going to take, we're going to throw out the ones that don't work and we're going to put in some best management practices in place of those that we think will work better. We also have to update our training. We need to update our site map because your, your business changes all the time. And you may move where the pressure sits or you may move where you store a particular piece of product. 
those things, we need to reflect those kinds of changes on your site map. You also need to reflect changes if you change the way that water flows, or you put up a new building, or you put in a parking lot. All of those kinds of things come out on your site map, and they get updated at least every year. So I want to talk about something else that comes from a little bit bigger picture. And that is that the heart of complying with the stormwater regulations is built around the idea that we say what it is we're going to do, and then we do exactly what we say we're going to do. If we say that we're going to put oil in the bucket, and then we're going to take the bucket and put the oil inside the tank, then we do that not some of the time, but we do it every single time. If we say that we're going to drain gasoline out of a car and we're going to put it in a tank and then maybe employees are going to use it or it gets recycled with some gasoline recycling company, if we say we're going to do that once and we say we're going to do it all of the time, then we do it every single time. And it's imperative from a stormwater standpoint that we don't let some of that hit the ground or some of it run off the property. All right, I think we're coming to a close here. We've, we've uh, shown that the stormwater plan for a auto recycling facility is similar, though not exactly alike, to one that is for a scrap metal facility. The practices that you deal with are frequently very similar. I would say to you that compliance with the programs are very similar. We've got to look at the material that comes in. We've got to talk about what pollutants we might have on the property. They might be different from a car versus a piece of scrap metal. We've got to look at where those pollutants might run off of the property, eventually going to some river somewhere. And then we've got to have a set of BMPs that tell us exactly how do we keep oil from getting in the river. So, I would say to you that if this has helped, great. If, if there's something that you feel like I didn't cover and you have questions, please don't hesitate calling any one of the great team of folks at James Environmental. They will, they will assist you further with these kinds of things. And this is all material that frequently, for those that we see on a regular basis, this is all material that is frequently covered during your annual training sessions when you see your field auditor from James Environmental. Thanks, and I wish you a great day. Bye.